After this lesson, students will be able to write linear equations when given any point on the line and the slope of the line, or any two points on the line. Do now. Try the do now on your own, so pause the movie and resume when you're ready. Write an equation for a line with a y-intercept of 4 fifths and a slope of 3. Well, we can use slope-intercept form since we're given the slope and the y-intercept. So y equals our slope, or m, which is 3, x plus our y-intercept b, which is 4 fifths. So y equals 3x plus 4 fifths. The second question asks us to write an equation for the following graph. Well, we start by finding what the y-intercept is, which is the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we know that our b is negative 7. Now we can figure out our slope by choosing two points on the line and finding our rise and our run. Our rise is negative since we're going down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over our run, which is 2. Our slope is negative 5 halves, which we leave as an improper fraction since we want it to stay in the form of rise over run. So now we know that our equation is y equals negative 5 halves x minus 7. So far, we've learned about slope-intercept form and standard form, which are two different ways of writing linear equations. Today, we're going to focus on the third form of a linear equation, which is called point-slope form. Point-slope form is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x1, where x sub 1 and y sub 1 are the x and y coordinates of a point provided, and m still represents our slope. So for example, write an equation of the line that passes through the point 6, negative 3 and has a slope of negative 2. So we are given our slope, so we know that m equals negative 2. Now this time, we were not given the y-intercept. Instead, we were given a point that the line goes through. So we have a point and we have our slope. Now our point is x comma y, which in this case is x sub 1 and y sub 1. And now we can substitute each of these parts into the point slope form formula. y minus our y1, which is negative 3, and when you subtract a negative number, that would be adding. So y plus 3 equals our slope, negative 2, times x minus our x sub 1, which is 6. This is point slope form, so we can leave this as our final answer for the equation. We're also asked to graph this line. So we'll start with the point, 6, negative 3, since we know the line goes through that point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, negative 1, 2, 3. And we know our slope is negative 2, which means that from that point, I can go do down 2 and right 1, or I can go up 2 and left 1, which I'll do several times in order to get our graph, and I draw with a straight edge to connect the dots. And draw an arrow on both ends to show that this line goes on forever in both directions. Now, to show you how this could be changed to slope-intercept form, you can distribute your slope, since this part would be the distributive property, and you'd get y plus 3 equals negative 2x plus 12, and then subtract 3 from both sides, 
combine like terms, so you're left with negative 2x plus 9. If you look at our graph, we don't see our y-intercept, but you can see that it looks like it would be at 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if this were to continue, it looks like it would cross at about 9. Our slope is negative 2, consistent with our graph. Now you try these two questions on your own. So pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So we're given our slope of negative 2 and our point negative 3 comma 6, which is the x sub 1 and y sub 1. We use our formula y minus y1, which is 6, equals our slope of negative 2 times x minus x sub 1, or negative 3. So this becomes x plus 3. And that is point slope form, so it's our final answer. Number 2, we have our x and our y, and we have our slope. y minus y sub 1, so y plus 1, equals our m times x minus negative 2, so x plus 2, and then this is our final answer. Try number three on your own, so pause the movie and resume when you're ready. Write an equation of the line that passes through the point negative three comma zero and has a slope of one third. We have our x and our y coordinates, so y minus zero equals our slope, which is one third, times x minus negative 3, or x plus 3. So far, we have learned how to write equations when given the slope and the y-intercept, where we just plug in our m and our b into our slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. We've also learned how to write equations when we're given the slope and the points on a line which is what we were just practicing with point-slope form. Now, we will write equations when all we're given is two points on the line. So for example, write the equation of the line that passes through the points 6, 8 and negative 3, 2. Well, we're given two points on the line, but we want to look for the equation of the entire line. With point-slope form, we learned how to write an equation of a line when we're given at least one point and the slope. In the past, we have also learned our slope formula, where we can find the slope when given two points. So we'll begin by actually labeling these as x sub 1, y sub 1, x sub 2, y sub 2, and using our slope formula, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 to find the slope of the line. So we have 2 minus 8 over negative 3 minus 6, which equals negative 6 over negative 9, or positive 2 thirds. So now we know that our slope is positive 2 thirds. Now we can choose either of the points and write an equation using point-slope form. It does not matter which point you choose. So for example, one option would be y minus 8 equals 2 thirds times x minus 6. Or another option would be y minus 2 equals 2 thirds times x plus 3. Now either one of these are acceptable answers. And to show that these are the same line, I'm going to change each of these into slope-intercept form to show you that they are in fact the same. So I'll start by distributing 2 thirds. So y minus 8 equals 2 thirds x minus 2 thirds times 6, which is 4. And then I can add 8 to both sides. y equals 2 thirds x plus 4. That's slope-intercept form. Now let's try to change this point-slope form into slope-intercept form and see if we get the same thing. 
y minus 2 equals 2 thirds x plus 2. Add the 2 to both sides and we get y equals 2 thirds x plus 4. So we did get the same thing and you can see that if we were to graph these points, not only would they go through the point 6 comma 8 and negative 3 comma 2, but we also know, now know that our y-intercept is at 0 comma 4, and we know that our slope is 2 thirds. Now you try. Write the equation of these lines, and you can leave them in point-slope form. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So we're just given two points, so we first need to calculate our slope. That's x. So our slope is 5 minus negative 1, or 5 plus 1, over 9 minus negative 1, or 9 plus 1, which gives us 6 tenths, or 3 fifths. Our slope is 3 fifths. Now we can choose either of these points in order to write the equation of the line. So I would do, let's say, our first ordered pair, y minus negative 1, which is y plus 1, equals our slope of 3 fifths times x minus negative 1, which is x plus 1. So that is one option. You could have also chosen the other ordered pair, which would give you y minus 5 equals 3 fifths times x minus 9. Number 2, write the equation of the line that crosses through negative 3 comma 1 and 5 comma 5. We find our slope first, 5 minus 1 over whoop, 5 plus 3, which equals 4 over 8 or 1 half. So now we know that our slope is 1 half, we can choose either of these points. y minus 5 equals 1 half times x minus 5 is one option. or y minus 1 equals 1 half times x plus 3 is the other option. Try a few more of these. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So we find our slope. m equals negative 3 minus 3 over 4 minus 5 which equals negative 6 over negative 1, or 6. So our slope is 6, and we can choose either of the two points to put in point-slope form. y minus 3 equals 6 times x minus 5, or y plus 3 equals 6 times x minus 4. Write an equation for the line that passes through the points negative 1, 1, and 4, 5. Our slope is 5 minus 1 over 4 plus 1, which is 4 over 5. So our slope is 4 fifths, and we choose either point. y minus 1 equals 4 fifths times x plus 1 is one of the answer choices, or y minus 5 equals 4 fifths times x minus 4. And finally, we'll write an equation for the line that passes through the points negative 8, negative 4, and 4 comma 2. So our slope is 2 minus negative 4, which is 2 plus 4, over 4 minus negative 8, which is 4 plus 8, 6 twelfths gives us 1 half. So our slope is 1 half, and our two equations are either y plus 4 equals 1 half times x plus 8, 
or y minus 2 equals 1 half times x minus 4. Now to graph using point slope form. Graph the equation y minus 5 equals 1 half times x minus 2. Well, if we know that point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity of x minus x1, we know that our slope is 1 half. We know that x1 is 2. Since the formula is x minus x1, this negative is actually part of the formula. So positive 2 is our x1, and then y1 is positive 5, since again, this minus is part of point-slope form. So now that we know our point and our slope, we can start by plotting the point on the graph, 2 comma 5, And then from that point, we can use our slope to graph the other points. Up 1 over 2, or down 1 left 2, down 1 left 2, and continue to repeat until we get to the edge of the grid. And then we can use a straight edge, connect these dots, and draw arrows on both ends. Now you try the next one on your own. So pause the movie and resume when you're ready. So point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we know that our slope is negative 2 thirds. Now x1 is actually negative 2 because you'll notice that in point-slope form, it's x minus x1, and in our equation, we have a plus sign, which would really be x minus negative 2. So x1 is negative 2. Our y sub 1 is 5, because the negative is part of our point-slope form. Now that I know the point in our slope, we can plot the point, negative 2, comma, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then use our slope to plot the other points. Down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3, down 2, right 3, then up 2, left 3. And then we can connect those dots. And there we have our graph. Writing linear equations using a table. Is the relationship shown by the data linear? If so, model the data with an equation. Well, we've actually already done this in a previous section when we were developing our function rules from a table. In this case, we can also try to use point-slope form as another method when we're given a table that looks linear and then we can write our equation of that line. So first, we'll find our slope, which is rise over run, or the change in y over the change in x. Our rise, we're going up two here, up one here, and up three here. Now, even though that doesn't look consistent, we have to check now to see if our run was consistent because it may be that the ratio of our rise to the run for each of these changes is actually the same. So, for example, and I'm going to write on the inside here since I'm running out of space on the left side of the table, to get from negative 1 to 3, we're actually going up 4. To get from 3 to 5, we're going up 2. And to get from 5 to 11, we're going up 6. So now when I compare the rise over the run, we have 2 over 4, which is 1 half. We have 1 over 2, which is 1 half. And we have 3 over 6, which equals 1 half. So it turns out that our slope is 1 half. 
Now we can use our slope and any of the points on the line and write it in point slope form. So for example, if I choose the first point, negative 1 comma 4, along with our slope, we can put this in point slope form, y minus 4 equals 1 half times x plus 1, and that counts as our answer, since that would be an equation of the line. We could have chosen any of these points on the line, and if we were to change them all to slope intercept form, we would get the same answer. So now you try one on your own. Pause the movie and resume when you're ready. First, let's calculate our slope, which is rise over run. To get from 7 to negative 3, we're going down 10. To get from negative 3 to negative 1, we're actually adding 2. And to get from negative 1 to 5, we're adding 6. Now let's see about our run. Negative 11 to negative 1, we're adding 10. Negative 1 to 4, we're adding 5. And 4 to 19, we're adding 15. Our slope for negative 10 over 10 would have been negative 1. 2 over 5 is 2 fifths, and 6 over 15 reduces to 2 fifths. Now because of this one here, this shows that this is not actually linear. So no, this is not linear. Now let's practice some real world problems. Between 1985 and 1995, the number of vacation trips in the United States taken by United States residents increased by about 26 million per year. In 1993, United States residents went on 740 million vacation trips within the United States. Part A, write a linear equation that models the number of vacation trips y in millions in terms of the year t. Let t be the number of years since 1985. Well, in this problem, we know that year 0 is 1985, since t represents the number of years since 1985. We also know that the number of vacation trips increased by about 26 million per year. This is a rate of change, so we know that our slope is 26. And since our y is in millions, we don't need to write out million. We can just say that our slope is 26. We were also given a point. In 1993, United States residents went on 740 million vacation trips. Now notice how 1993 is not year zero, and therefore 740 is not our y-intercept. Instead, we can figure out what this point is by figuring out, well, 1993 would be year eight, because 1985 is year zero, 1986 is year one, 1987 is year two, etc. So 1993, eight years have passed, and now our number of vacation trips is 740 million. And again, we're going to hold off on writing the millions. So from this information, we were able to gather our slope. We were able to gather a point. When we know a point and a slope, we can use point-slope form. Notice how instead of x and y, though, we're using t and y. So you can label this as t and y. So now for point slope form, we have y minus our y1, which is 740, which equals our slope, 26, times what would normally be x, or our input, which in this case is t minus our t sub 1, which is 8. So this is the equation 
that represents the number of vacation trips taken in the United States over time. In Part B, we're asked to estimate the number of vacation trips in the year 2005. Well, the year is our input value, which in this case is t. Now keep in mind that 1985 is year zero. So that means that for 2005, t would equal 20. So all we're doing is substituting 20 in for t, and then we can calculate our y. So y minus 740 equals 26 times 20 minus 8. We use our order of operations, so we start with parentheses. Oops, let's fix that. Twenty-six times twelve is three hundred twelve. And then add seven hundred forty. And you get 1,052. Now remember how we said that our y is in millions. Now you wouldn't say 1,052 million, so instead I need to figure out how much this actually is. Well, in millions means that we would add six zeros. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put in your commas, and you can see that it's actually 1 billion 52 million vacation trips. So there will be about 1 million 50 or 1 billion 52 million vacation trips in 2005. Now you try this problem on your own. So pause the movie and resume when you're ready. All the employees of a garden center are given a 40 cent per hour raise each year. You make $7.15 per hour after three years as an employee. Write a linear equation that models your salary per hour, S, in terms of N, the number of years you have worked at the garden center. Then find your hourly salary after six years. So, we need to figure out what information they're providing us in this problem. When they tell you that all the employees are given a 40 cent per hour raise, that shows you the rate of change. The rate of change in your salary compared to the number of hours or, or years that you've been working. I'm sorry, it's years. So 40 cents per hour raise each year. Now you make $7.15 per hour after three years as an employee. So this information is actually a point because they're not telling you how much you started with initially. Therefore, this is not a y-intercept, but rather a point on the line. So we know that our slope is 0 0.40, and we know our point. Now we do need to figure out which one is the input and which one is the output. Now our output always depends on the input. And in this case, the amount of money that you make, or your salary, depends on how many years you've been an employee. Therefore, the input is 3, and your salary, $7.15, is your output. Now that we know a point and our slope, we can plug this into point-slope form. Oh, except they said not to use x and y, but rather n and s. So I do need to change this. So this is our n, and this is our s, n sub 1 and s sub 1. 
So S minus $7.15 equals our slope times N minus 3. Now find your hourly salary after six years. Well, the number of years that you work is your input value, or N. So now I can plug 6 in for N and calculate S, our salary. S minus $7.15 equals 0, 0.40 times 6 minus 3. So you find that S equals $8.35. So after six years, your salary is $8.35 per hour. Go ahead and try this problem on your own. So pause the movie and resume when you're ready. To learn more about water evaporation, you measure the depth of a puddle after a rainstorm. Your first measurement, taken three hours after the storm, was 2.25 inches. You take another measurement an hour later to determine that the rate of evaporation of the puddle is 0.25 inches per hour. Write a linear equation that models the depth of the puddle D in inches in terms of T, the number of hours since the storm. So when they tell you that your first measurement taken three hours after the storm was 2.25 inches, that is a point on the line. Our independent variable or input is three hours and your output or dependent variable is 2.25 inches because the depth of the puddle depends on how many hours have passed since the storm. Now, they told you that the rate of evaporation of the puddle is 0.25 inches per hour. This is the rate of change. Now, because it's evaporation, and we're talking about the depth of the puddle, that means that our slope is actually negative 0.25 because our depth is going down by 0.25 inches each hour. So that was a little bit tricky there remembering that you needed to include that negative because of the context of the question. So now instead of x and y, our input is t and our output is d. So when we write our equation, we have d minus 2.25 equals negative 0.25 times t minus 3. So this is the equation that models the depth of the puddle over time. In part B, we're asked to estimate the depth of the puddle seven hours after the storm. So seven is our input, or t, and so we substitute that in, and then we can solve for d. Oh, and here I made a mistake this whole time, so let me go ahead and fix that. At least I caught my error here. So this should be d minus 2.25. So plus 2.25, which means I need to change it over here as well. plus 2.25 and so we find that d equals 1.25. The depth of the puddle is 1.25 inches 7 hours after the storm. Let's try another one of these. 
pause the movie and resume when you're ready. You switch to a new cellular service because you are dissatisfied with your current service. Your new peak airtime rate is eight cents per minute. In addition to the airtime rate, there is a monthly access charge. For 200 minutes of airtime, your bill was $40.75. Write an equation that models the cost C of your monthly bill in terms of the minutes X used. So it says that the rate is eight cents per minute, which is the rate of change. So we know that our slope is 0.08. We also know that for 200 minutes of airtime, the bill was $40.75. 200 is our input and $40.75 is our output because the cost of the bill depends on how many minutes you used. We're using X and C for this problem. So C minus 40.75 equals 0 0.08 times x minus 200. How much is your monthly bill for 500 minutes of airtime? So we can plug in 500 for x And now 300 times 0 0.08 is 24. And we're adding 40.75 to both sides. So C equals 64.75. So the bill costs $64.75 for 500 minutes of airtime.